This is the most powerful country on the face of the earth. You couldn't believe this was happening in real life. It's all very vivid and also very much a blur. And it was like, it just happened to us? Yeah, it happened to us. I knew the country had changed at that particular moment. When something like that happens, nothing protects you. It was surreal. It was almost like it was something out of a movie set. It's something that you, you never hope ever happens again anywhere. And I sat there in awe watching this whole thing unfold. Confirmation now that a large plane has crashed. Some people in desperation were seen leaping from the towers. People were crying, of course. There were people frightened. There were people looking for their babies. Uh, clearly, nowhere in America feels safe at the moment. This is devastation. Terrible scene, a terrible scene. This has been a coordinated, a very sophisticated and determined attack on the heart of America. I couldn't believe what was going on. Uh, I started calling uh, my wife and said, uh, are you watching TV? Can you put the TV on? I turned and uh, I looked and I, I saw the uh, fire in one of the uh, Twin Towers. And sure enough, about, I was watching the TV about 10 minutes after that. I saw the second plane hit the, uh, the second tower. It was surreal. It was almost like it was something out of a movie set. Definitely, this is not a, 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 a mistake or, a, or an accident. This is something that is, 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 is really premeditated. You go, this is not happening I mean, on American soil. I mean, to me, it was an attack. This thing wasn't accidental. I mean, this was a plan. Uh, they closed the, the tunnels, um, and the only way in and out was through the bridge, and obviously people were terrified uh, to be in Manhattan, and so it, it got really, really dormant. You know, just, just imagine Manhattan, with no cars in the streets, and just people walking the streets with no noise. It was, it was kind of eerie, and uh, I'll never forget it. My wife is just like coming in. Uh, she's running, she's calling me, she's panicking also. Uh, and, and, you know, what I remember is just trying to, you know, try to make time with, with my son. And a lot of people were walking north away from uh, the disaster, the tragedy, and they were all covered in soot and dust. And that's when it hit me that this is real. Everyone had fear. That's one of the things that um, my team had to deal with, uh, the people of the city had to deal with, the people of the country had to deal with for a long time. You process all this information, the next day, I gotta deal with a football team in New York, where we've been attacked, one of the spots we've been attacked. It took us a long time to live our days, get up and um, figure out how to get through that uh, brave new world we were entering. I was we call the commissioner and figure out what are we gonna do? Are we gonna play, are we not gonna play? Um, I was hoping and praying that the decision would be we would not play. Because emotionally, we were not ready to play. 
We in the National Football League have decided that our priorities for this weekend are to pause, breathe, and reflect. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that sporting events are absolutely meaningless. I hope that at least we can play a very positive role in helping people trying to do the right thing. It is a time to tend to families and neighbors and all those wounded by these horrific acts of terrorism. For people to think that it's okay to play sports this weekend is absolutely asinine. We needed some time to reflect. I mean, sometimes we think, well, sports takes us away from it. This was, to me, was bigger than that. I mean, you know, I lived in Long Island. When I would go by the train station. There were cars sitting there for a week. Those people weren't coming back home. That's reality. Okay, that's bigger than football. It was quite scary to be honest with you and, and just we all waited to, to see what the what the outcome was going to be for the next week and, and, and baseball was really put on the back burner at that particular time. You know, I told players after that was over, I said, if your parents aren't living in this state and you don't live with your parents, you need to call them. If you have children, go home and hug them. Tell them you love them. Because we, we just take that for granted. We just think every day is like, oh yeah, I'm gonna wake up. You don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. We think we do, but we don't know. We don't control that. We, 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 th we live in a society where we think we can control everything. We think we can press a button. We have enough knowledge. We can do this. You don't control anything. We really don't. And that, that hit home probably more than anything else. The events of September 11th will be forever etched in the minds of everyone in this country. And tonight is part of the healing process. Baseball returns to New York for the first time since September 11th. It was sort of a, a mix of so many emotions and it was certainly, I think, a relief and a, and a you know, sort of cathartic to have baseball and, and something back. Uh, in the city that uh, you, you could rally around and sort of feel normal again. I can remember driving in on a bus, uh, talking to, you know, some of the guys, uh, Smoltz, Glavin, uh, Maddox, a few others, and, and, and them knowing that I was from New York, asking me, you know, what, what are the feelings, what, what, you know, and telling them I grew up in the shadows of Shea Stadium. Uh, it, right across Flushing Bay. I, I, I could physically hear the 86 Mets winning the World Series when the ball went through Buckner's legs from my house. Uh, and, and to go back there at, at this moment was, was different. Uh, was emotional, uh, to say the least. For the land of the free I can just remember standing there, listening to the national anthem, uh, and, 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 and just thinking of all the images that I saw on TV flash back in my mind for that week of, of the planes going into the, into the towers and, and the towers coming down. Uh, you know, and, and just, to be honest, felt a, a sense of sadness for all of the families who had lost people during that particular time. All the emotions just, just came out. I mean, it was, it, it was pretty intense. There were um, uh, many people who were struggling with pain and sorrow and uh, had a lot of healing to do. So the, there was a, you know, real confused state of whether or not this was a celebration, whether it was a game that should be played to be enjoyed, whether it was just a symbolic gesture. Uh, by the national pastime or um, or what and we really didn't know what it was it's up to you
know, Liza Minnelli's New York, New York was a, was a bit of a time to, you know, show a good face and be proud that it was the city. So nice that they named it twice and, um, um, but there was still kind of confusion whether or not uh, we were supposed to be celebrating or whether we were supposed to be joyous or we were supposed to be in the solemn mood that was still, um, you know, 10 days later, totally part of our country. I knew what the game had meant, but I also knew what the game had meant to all of the people who I heard, you know, chanting USA, 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 and, and how they were feeling at that particular time. You know, I knew I had a job to do, but I also knew what, uh, what the emotion was. I mean, it, it was, you could cut it with a knife. It was, it was that intense in that stadium in the eighth inning when I came in the game. Lopez wants it away. And it's a deep to left center. Andrew Jones on the run. This one has a chance. Home run. Mike Piazza and the Mets lead three to two. It was a real loud sound um, up until that point. Uh, as I say, the, no one knew how to act. As a competitor, as a pitcher, as a player, I wasn't thinking anything at that particular moment then. Just gave up a two-run home run to Piazza. When Mike hit the ball, and after clear defense, and after I think it was Robin Ventura and, or Todd, or uh, one of the guys on the team who literally propelled himself up out of the off the bench. Looking back, if there was an, if there was ever a game that I would have wanted to give up a two-run homer, which I didn't, uh, you know, it was definitely not one of those things where I was throwing a cookie to him, but you know, that would have been the game. I remember seeing out of the corner of my eye that that was kind of a direction to the fans that you can stand and you can cheer and you can uh, uh, begin to get back to normal scene. Lopez wants it away. And it's a deep to left center. Andrew Jones on the run. This one has a chance. Home run. Mike Piazza and the Mets lead three to two. The amount of noise, the eruption of the crowd felt and I heard nothing I've ever heard before at a baseball game. Uh, it was the loudest thing I, I have ever heard. The, the yelling was, um, was louder. You know, the players that were saying yes uh, were saying yes in such a louder voice. Oh yeah, whatever those, those um, uh, uh, words were, were, were really amplified, at least in my mind. Piazza put the joy back into 50,000 people in one swing of the bat. It, it was truly, you know, an amazing moment for New York and, uh, and, and it, it, just, it just brings back a lot of memories. I think it was an amazing uh, gesture of, uh, of unity, amazing gesture of, uh, of strength, an amazing uh, symbolic gesture that um, uh, we will overcome and that we won't, um, that we won't allow this horrific act to uh, keep us down. We were down. Uh, and I, I think that that um, started our rebound. And please welcome the President of the United States.
come from behind to win two World Series games when trailing by two or more runs going into the bottom of the ninth inning. And isn't it fitting that that team, the New York Yankees, here in 2001, these last two games defy description. It was an escape, I think, for people. I think people looked at it as there was a lot of really serious stuff going on still. A lot of people still looking for loved ones and people still recovering in hospitals and uh, you know, people trying to just dig out of downtown and sort of try to figure out how to put the pieces back together. We were doing it for everybody. You know, not only for New York, we were doing it for everybody. I think we felt like uh, it's the only way we can uh, get people's mind away from what was going on and you know, all the people that that died and uh, and it was just it was a tough time but at the same time we were we were playing for a purpose. The Yankees got even more support that year than they usually do. Uh, probably just about everybody in the country was rooting for them except Arizona. Sudden for the first time you actually saw people around the country rooting for the Yankees because of what had gone on in New York and sort of the feel good story. Uh, which is not something you see very often. Usually the Yankees are the object of everybody's hatred. I mean, it was wonderful. It was, uh, it was too bad that, uh, that uh, uh, we didn't want it. I mean, uh, we give everything uh, that we have, and uh, we give the city of New York uh, the little that we can give them at that time to try to let them forget a little bit for hours. I think the Yankees understood that uh, they weren't going to be able to fix what was going on downtown. They weren't going to be able to bring back any of the people who died. Um, but if they could help somebody for three hours on one night, to sort of forget about it, uh, put it aside, and have something else to, you know, focus on and, and actually cheer for something and be happy about something, uh, then you know that was sort of their contribution to trying to help New York sort of move forward and heal a little bit. We play some games in New York City that uh, it was it was. Uh, I won't say magical, but it was a, a, a bless from the Lord. You know, the way we looked at it was, you know, you're never going to forget what happened, uh, but at least for the three hours that we were playing, we felt as though we gave people something that they could cheer for. And, uh, you know, that postseason there was probably as exciting as any postseason we played in. Our country changed on that particular day. That plane going into that second building, uh, I would never forget that. I mean, the first one was kind of like a blurry, uh, but the second one, very, very vivid, very li live, and um, you know, you, you can still see the smoke. I mean, I can look up in the area and I can still see the smoke of, of when the, the buildings went down. I had an opportunity to go down to Ground Zero and um, see what it was like, and uh, you, know, you never get that image out of your head. It was complete destruction. It's all very vivid and also very much blur. The plane, the, the collapse of the building, the smoke, the people running, the faces, the sounds, uh, it's, all, it's all there. I will never forget standing on our practice field and just seeing smoke rise. And it, it wasn't for a day. This, this smoke rose for three, four days. So for the rest of that week of practice, we went out there and stood and practiced, but were distracted by the loss of life that was literally five miles away. I think we'll always mark time uh, before and after, uh, you know, it was, it was the life you led before and the life you're leading after. It was a lot of sadness, a lot of angriness, you know, but also a lot of closeness to each other. You know, I mean, we people were more, uh, 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 I would say, uh, helpful. When something like that happens, nothing protects you. Your wealth, nothing. You're not protected. You feel like, whoa, what just happened? This is the most powerful country on the face of the earth. On the whole face of the earth. And it happened here. And that generally doesn't happen in America. And it was like, it just happened to us? Yeah, it happened to us. So I think sometimes we have to realize, you know what, let's don't think we're so high and mighty.
and it puts a lot of things in perspective. You know, we uh, come in here and uh, you know we play a game for a living, and, and you act like it's a do or die situation, but it really puts things in perspective and also lets you know don't take anything for granted. You know, the thing my father taught me about about freedom. It's not free. My father fought in two wars. You know, he, 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 was, he was willing to give his life for freedoms, all right? And so I get that, I understand all that, and so I think sometimes we lose sight of that. George W. Bush said that uh, that day the world changed, and the world definitely changed that day. And, um, you know, adjusting to change is not easy. And uh, I, I think that sports was one of those common denominators as we moved forward in this change in the changing world that people kind of grasped onto. One guy left a message that basically said, you know, I went out to uh, the Denver game to see you guys play the Broncos in a new stadium and obviously he didn't get back uh, Tuesday morning to go to work. And he said the one thing that, uh, he, that touches him and I hope you guys realize is that my kids still have a father because I'm a Giants fan. When we heard this, it was like, oh my God, you realize how important sports are to people's lives. Um, and I think uh, uh, it, it gives our job purpose and meaning other than just wins and losses and how many yards you have, uh, especially when you go through something like we did on 9-11.